So personally, I've wanted to talk about this guy for some time now because a lot of people are under the impression that this man is a true Christian, of which I believe he is not. Now, the question is, is the man funny? Sure, I'll give him that. I guess he's funny. He can be funny. But there's nothing funny about the need of a gospel message for a dying and lost world. There's nothing funny about sinners dying in their sins and going to hell for all eternity. You can't do that with Christianity. Make it funny. Make light of it. It doesn't work. You might be able to do that with anything else, but it just doesn't work with Christianity. The weight and cost of the gospel is far too serious for it to be made light of. So news has come out that there has been quite a few scandals regarding this man, and they aren't because he's been persecuted for his faith. One is a sexual harassment case in which the article states that there has been a pattern, a pattern of manipulation and sexual harassment of female fans. The other scandal is regarding his in and out of rehabs because of his suicide attempts. Now. This so-called Christian now has a comedy special with Netflix. He inked a deal with Netflix. And I'm pretty sure he will not be using his platform to share the gospel to the masses on the big stage. We know that won't be happening. Now listen, the question is, and this is the thing I've always asked myself regarding comedy and Christianity. And that is, is it possible to be a Christian comedian who is biblical and is able to tell jokes that are funny, but also God honoring and appropriate? That's the question I've always asked myself regarding comedians in Christianity? And the answer, my own answer, is I don't know. I don't know if, it, if it's possible or appropriate to even consider a comedian who is a Christian that is able to be funny. I, 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 don't, I don't, for me, it doesn't work. Um, but what I do know is that sinners don't need any more laughter. What they need is a message that brings salvation. Now, there's nothing wrong with laughing and having a good time. But when a man calls himself a Christian, okay, see, this is the difference. This is the distinction. When a man calls himself a Christian, okay, and causes more laughter than sorrow, that's a problem. Let's look at some wisdom from the wisest man who have ever lived regarding sorrow, King Solomon. Ecclesiastes 1.18, for in much wisdom is much grief, not laughter, grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. We're on the team. Anyway, but listen, I, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to get into kind of like spiritual message or something because I know there's one guy that's not a Christian in here, so I'll try to get him saved. But uh, like I've been through a lot in the past two years of my life, and you can look it up on you can Google. Well, don't Google it, but uh, maybe it's fine on page two by now. But who knows? Uh, <laughs> that's stupid. Uh, but there's a lot of like there's a lot of shame surrounding sex. That's why I make jokes about it because like it's a, it's like a that's a God given and a lot of like I've been through a lot of embarrassing things and especially I wanted to commit suicide. Uh, I was in rehab for four months. It's a long story. Somebody goes like, "What's going on here?" Uh, <laughs> anyway, but there's a lot of like I was I was talk about it because there's a lot of people in here that struggle with a lot of shame, especially surrounding. I was in rehab for four months. I got out of rehab. I was on a Sunday, so I went to Five Guys. Chick Fil A was closed. Uh, <laughs> And I went in there, and I was like very embarrassed. I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever tell jokes again. I, th I gave up on being a comedian and all that stuff. I was like, you know, I just want to, you know, live by myself and not tell jokes anymore. Uh, but I never forget this. Oh, love you, girl. Okay, well, yeah. That's how I got in trouble last time. So don't. Uh... <laughs> I don't know why that's stupid. Uh, there's a lot of shame, a lot of shame surrounding sex, especially as a Christian. I never forget because everything I went through was horrific and embarrassing and, and, and awful, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But the only thing worse is if that would have never happened to me because I would have lived and just, I, okay, one guy's from church. Mm, yeah. We love you. <laughs> but like, I, I, like I, there's, I've dated women that are in their 30s and that just carry around a lot of shame surrounding sex and that just something that they did that you don't think you get. And I thought every, I thought everybody, every time I had like a sold out show or anything that I did like on television, it would always come, as a Christian, it would come with a lot of shame because I thought that if everybody knew the truth about me that all these people would hate me and that whole rehabilitation process is I found out that there's a God that loves you and he cares about you and he's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. No, and I don't listen. Uh, let's pray. I'm just kidding. Sorry. Sorry. I got too deep. I got into a hole. I didn't know how to get myself out of it. I kind of, my bad. <laughs> anyway, we're, if you'd like to, we're just going to pass around the buckets. If you have a couple of dollars, just slide them in. That would have been the perfect time for the buckets. Get them in with the emotions. Send the buckets, baby. That's stupid.
<laughs> but there is. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that like. I. I. I, with, I, I oh, what I was telling the story about when I went to Five Guys, and uh, I was wearing like a hood and sunglasses, and I didn't want to be recognized or nothing like that. And this, I never forget this family. They were like, "Hey, John." And I was like, oh, they called me over to their table. I was like, they're going to say I'm a bad Christian or I'm a bad influence on their kids or I'm an embarrassment or whatever. And they go, we just want to let you know that we love you and we care about you and we've been thinking about you. And I was like, it was so confusing because that was the first time in my life that people knew everything about me and they still chose to love me. And I, I just want to say that in a lot of ways, I've been through a lot of darkness and, and the people that are out here, the politics of my show, uh, saved my life in a lot of ways. And I just want to say thank you. That's it. I don't, I have, yeah, thank you. You know, I, 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 I'm not trying to do like a thing, but uh, uh, if you'd like to sponsor a child, would you slip your hand? <laughs> you know that Bible verse where every three or more are gathered in my name? Compassion International is there getting kids sponsored. That is there. That's across the line. I shouldn't say it. I'll tell you one story about rehab. It's just like, all right, so I was in rehab for like four months and it was horrible. I called my best friend and his wife and I was on the speakerphone with them. Best friend and his wife, and I was like, dude, this place is terrible. You gotta wake up at dawn, you gotta go to breakfast, you gotta go to meditation, you gotta go to yoga, you gotta go to Bible study. His wife, I, I was crying. His wife grabs the phone, and I'm, I'm crying. She goes, I don't mean to interrupt here, but we have three kids under five. This place sounds incredible. <laughs> I was like, what? She's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta talk to a therapist. I gotta talk to a therapist all day. She goes, you get to talk to an adult, huh? What's that like? I goes, you don't understand, there's drug tests, they watch you pee. She goes, oh, only one person watches you pee, huh? <laughs> Did I hear you were going to breakfast? Is someone cooking you breakfast? That must be nice. I go, you don't understand, there's absolutely no sexual activity. She goes, this place sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> But take laughter with you. You guys, a lot of you guys are like, you, it's, a, it's such a relief to laugh and jokes. And it's, life is horrible, dude. Everything out there is horrible. Like, you gotta start laughing at some things. You know what I'm saying? Just take some photos of people, send it to the group text. It helps you. <laughs> it helps you cope. You know what I'm saying? Laughter is a good medicine. That's Proverbs tw uh, 26. It might be Proverbs 4 26. It's one of those. Uh, I'm anorexic. I get the numbers switched up. But, uh. <laughs> Take laughter with you. That's all I'm saying. You guys know who uh, Mark Lowry is? You ever heard that name before? Mark Lowry is one of my buddies. He, he's, a, he's, he's a comedian, and he was he said the greatest laughter always comes from the greatest amount of pain. And we've done shows uh, in prisons. We've done crisis pregnancy centers. We've done military tours in the Middle East. We've done. He's like, it must be tough to tell jokes there. No, it's easy, dude. People that have been to the darkness, I've seen the devil. I looked him in the eye. I don't have time for mm -mm -mm -mm, like flight attendant lady. Like who cares? Just kidding. 